Here's how you are going to make a cover using Canva to upload to Kindle Direct Publishing to publish your book. Hi, I'm Julie and welcome to our channel, Fun Affiliate Family. I wanna make sure you don't miss any videos in our new series. You did that in Canva, so I want to make sure you subscribe to our channel and be sure to stay to the end of this video and I'm gonna tell you how you can get Canva Pro for free. Let's go. And welcome to Canva. To create your book cover, you're going to start with create a design and then click on custom size. Here's where you're going to enter your dimensions. Now, when you're creating, for instance, the six by nine book, the width is actually going to be double that of just the front cover because you're going to be creating front and back cover together. So this is the dimension you would need to enter in inches for the six by nine book. Make sure you select inches first and then enter your width and then your height and then click create new design. To get the dimensions you need for the various book sizes, you can check out the self-publishing guide that I have linked in this video description and it will have a multitude of different sizes and the dimensions you need to create in Canva. So find that before you get started. Then click create new design. So here is your document. I've gone ahead and put front and back to just to give you a visual representation of where the front and back cover will be. Also, you want to go over here to file and click show margins and then do it again. Show the print to bleed. Now this margin, all of your words will need to be on this side of this dotted line. You don't want to have anything over because Kindle Direct Publishing will reject it. Your pictures are going to need to go beyond this other dotted line for your print bleed because once KDP prints this book, they're going to then cut the book to make your cover the right size and you need your image to go beyond so you don't have a white border around it. Same for interior. If you want an interior page to bleed off the edge like a children's illustration or things like that. All right, front and back. Now you also need to figure out where your spine is going to be. So you're going to just press L on your keyboard and it's going to give you a line. You're going to turn it where it's up to 90 and then pull it all the way up and down. And then that will be your spine. Make sure you keep it straight. Make sure it's in the center. It usually starts out in the center. If it's not, you can come in here and click center and it will go to the center. All right, so that's where your spine is going to be. Another thing to keep in mind is a barcode that Kindle Direct Publishing will put on a book. There's something going on right now with this, with Kindle Direct Publishing, and they are still letting you use free ISBNs as long as the book is not a low content book. So if you have like um, just a line book or maybe a sketchbook, it may be considered low content. But if you're doing something bigger, um, like a coloring book or some sort of... Um, like lead journal where you have maybe some Bible verses or some words leading you into what a person's going to write. It may be considered more of a higher content book, but either way, you need to kind of keep an area around and here open for the barcode. Now I'm going to show you the difference in adding pictures and adding a background. If you're going to add a picture, I'm just going to click this one over here because I thought it was pretty. Um, you're going to have to pull it all the way to the edge. You see how it's going over. Don't leave it like this right up to the line. I'm going to try to zoom in and show you because when they go to print, you see all this white space. Like even if it's just to here, they're not going to allow it. There's going to be a problem or either it's going to look bad. So you need it to go beyond. You see how far it's going beyond. So you need to make sure it goes beyond in all areas of this. Okay. So you're going to pull it you know, bottom and top, make sure it goes beyond that edge. All right, so I'm going to zoom back out so I can see the full theme. All right, I would even just keep pulling way beyond just to make sure. Okay, so we have our front and back. We have, we know where our spine is. Now that's a picture. Now, you see I had to pull it. So you have to be careful what you're using, you know, because certain pictures aren't going to look as good. I'm going to my flowers because that's what I love to do just to show you if we're going to have a flower picture let's just say this one so I'm going to delete this for now and show you you're going to have to pull but then you want to keep like you could do this but you want to make sure you keep what you want of that picture you know 
You don't want it to look outstretched. You don't want it to be out of sorts. Um, you know, just want it to look right um, in that. So pictures are a little bit harder to do, I think, than just the background. Now, if you want to just do background, let's scroll over here to background, sorry, and click background. Now, this is not... I mean, some of these look great, like this landscape. That's really pretty. It fills it for you. You see there's none of that clicking and dragging and making sure it is in the right spot. Background just pretty much fills it for you. So I love the background one for that reason. Um, it just looks really good. So you can search up here. You can just have a solid background if you want and then add some details to it. You could always do that as well. I'm going to show you something else you can do to make yours look different because everybody that uses Canva will have, um, they can get this background. So something you can do to make yours look different is to, one thing you can do is click on edit image and change your brightness, contrast, saturation. So you see how different it makes it look. You could do this. And it would make your book look different than other people. So I'm not saying this one looks great like that. You know, obviously it does not. Um, but that is something you could definitely do. Let me see if I can get it back to normal where it was. And you could also scroll down here and see the different filters. So sometimes this might look different because of the, what we chose here. But um, the filters will definitely change it for you. And you can easily just go through and pick something. That way your book will definitely look different than anyone else who just came in here and clicked on a picture. So those are, those are some options you can do. Um, let's see. You can also, let's see, more so with other things, but the transparency, sh you know, lightens it up a lot. So if you were to put it over something else, you know, that would maybe change things around a little and it would definitely make it look different than other people. So this is just something to keep in mind when you're doing your cover that you want it to look different and stand out from other people and all that. And also the busyness here is going, you got to keep that in mind because you're going to have to have a word on it. They will not allow you to print a book with no words. So you're going to have to have something on that front cover, not necessarily on the back, but definitely on the front. So let's talk about the font you will use. So I already have front and back on here, but if you are new to Canva, you can um, just click over here for the text box. This will give you an idea of how big or small the font would be, but you can always change that up here. So mine, I'm just going to do something simple. I'm just going to put notes. Um, you could put passwords. You could put my agenda. You could put anything you want. Okay. Now, when you clicked on this box, you can also, um, if you don't want to do that, you could also just click on one of these, let's say, and it will automatically put it up there and it will look exactly like you see it over here. And then you could resize it and, um, you know, put it over here. If you wanted to maybe say, instead of have those notes, you could have this word, instead of it saying, be brave, you would change it to notes or my journal, or something like that. Um, let's see, you can change the color of the text right here. So for this, I'd wanna do something dark. Um, you'll see how you can still see through it, which is kind of cool. All right, so that's just some different ideas for you. Let's see, um, back, you won't need anything on the back unless you want to. Some people put what's inside their book, little pictures on the, on the back, which I think is a great idea if you're doing a workbook or something, you could have a picture of the word search, maybe a coloring page, a connect the dots, whatever you're putting in your book, you can put little pictures back here. Just make sure you kind of keep it in this area. Don't go over this dotted line that you can barely see right now, but that's just still going to be a guide for you. Same with the word notes. This is the tricky part. You can't come up here and click position center anymore because look what happens. You can click um, middle if you want, and it will put it in the middle of the page, but you're still going to, and there's no easy way to do it, eyeball it going over, okay? And you're actually going to float between this spine and this edge over here. But keep in mind, you can't go beyond this dotted line. 
So in your brain, to me anyway, it tricks me a little bit and it's hard for me to tell. Sometimes I've even uploaded to Kindle Direct Publishing and then once I saw it, I'm like, that's not centered. So I go back in. You can correct your cover. You can go back and correct your cover and re-upload it even after the book's been published. So don't think that that's a problem. The only thing you can't change is your the title that you put for Kindle Direct Publishing and your subtitle. Um, that and I don't know if you can change your name. But anyway, so you can change your cover and the interior if you find a spelling error, which I have done. Okay, so that's the front. Let's say we love it. We're happy with that. It looks pretty centered. Um, the one step you have to do before you're done, you know, you're going to delete the spine because you don't need it. Now, some people do have a spine. Um, well, I mean, some people's books have a spine. <laughs> And then here you could always increase this and if you wanted a good one. But the bad thing is you don't really know how far over that's going to be. Um, so I just usually don't have one. That's something you could experiment with over time. Um, anyway, so I just do it like that. Now, this is for a 100 page or less journal. That does make a difference. You'll see in that self-publishing guide I mentioned, I'll have a link for that in the description. It does make a difference how big your book is because if you have a thicker book more pages means a thicker spine and that's you know going to be something different here so now we're ready we like it we're done with it i probably wouldn't really do one like this because i'd probably let's see if i can change the font maybe i would do something a little darker like this if i'm being honest um that is probably something i might would do as opposed to what we see there, I, you know, the word to me, the word notes like that doesn't really look that great. Um, anyway, so let's just say we're going with something like that. And you may say that looks even worse. But how's that? Okay, you have your cover. You're ready to go. You're going to click on share. And to save it, you're going to scroll to download. And it's very important that you keep it as you put it a PDF for print. This is probably going to be the suggested one, but PDF for print. And then down here, because this is the default usually, but you're going to need the CMYK for the Kindle Direct Publishing. Um, so make sure you save it as that. And then you're going to click download and it will download it. And then it should put it into your folder, your download folder. If not, you can always click on it and save it um, after that. And that's it. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something new. And if you did, be sure to give me a thumbs up. Now, if there's something else you'd like to learn about with Canvas features, be sure to leave me a comment and I'll make a video about it. Now, you wanna get Canva Pro for free for 30 days, right? All you have to do is click the link in this video description and you will have access to Canva Pro for free for 30 days. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.